So here we have it everybody, the $499 M2 powered Mac mini. And just saying that is kind of amazing because again, when the first M1 Mac mini came out, it started at $700. Now this one retails for $599 and there's already discounts occurring for $499. And you can get it directly from Apple if you are in the education store for $499. Now, yes, it only has 256 gigs of storage and eight gigs of RAM, but in this video, what I wanna talk about are my initial impressions of it, and then kind of go through some light testing, right? Some video exports, some thumbnail exports, maybe opening up a bunch of applications at the same time to see how quickly they run, and see if eight gigs of RAM is still enough if it's being used by the M2 chip. Because I do think that this $499 computer from Apple, which is, again, has their latest and greatest M2 silicon, I don't know, it's a steal for a lot of people and it's gonna open up the doors to a lot of people to get into this world. But without further ado, let's talk about the M2 Mac Mini. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Clean My Mac X. My Mac is sponsored by Clean My Mac X. I've personally been a paying customer for years now and no new Mac OS setup is complete without installing Clean My Mac X by MacPaw. Clean My Mac X is an all-in-one utility that can help nine to five Mac readers and viewers keep their Macs clean, fast and protected in just a few clicks. It prevents any Mac from cluttering, lagging and slowing down. For me, every Monday morning, like a ritual, I start up my Mac and run a clean sweep and scan of my Mac with Clean My Mac X to make sure everything is running optimally. Clean My Mac's all new menu app helps you take care of your Mac's health with six detailed monitors that provide useful information about your Mac's storage, state of protection, CPU performance, RAM, battery and network speeds. The menu app is totally free for all Mac users, but if you want a little more and to unlock the full experience, use the link in the description down below to receive a 5% discount for all 9 to 5 viewers. Thank you to Clean My Mac X by MacPaw for partnering up in 9 to 5, and now back to the video. So let's quickly unbox the Mac Mini. Again, this is a very classic Apple unboxing, very easy to open, and this is one of the most bare unboxings that I've ever gone through. So you open up the box itself, you see that on the rear it gives you the actual specs and the serial number, and then inside of the box, you literally get two things. You get the Mac mini and the power cable. And of course, like one piece of paperwork, it's no longer like a bunch of paperwork. It's like one piece of paperwork and you do get what I would call an XL Apple sticker in the space gray colorway. And again, this comes in only one single color and you don't get that much variation. And then on the rear, you see that we have a couple of ports. Once you rip off that little plastic that they have on there, you have two USB-A ports, a headphone jack, one HDMI port, two Thunderbolt ports, Ethernet, which is only the one gigabit Ethernet, you can upgrade to the 10 gigabit Ethernet if you would like to, and obviously the power input, and then finally the power button. But it, that's all you get, you get the power cable and the Mac Mini. Now obviously since the Mac Mini comes by itself, you will need some sort of display or monitor, you're gonna need a keyboard, and obviously you're gonna need a mouse. So if you have that laying around, again, this is a very easy way or very easy entry way to get the M2 Mac Mini. Now you might have to go out and buy a new keyboard, a mouse, and a monitor, but again, this will work with a lot of different monitors, especially because it does have Thunderbolt on the back, which means let's say you have an older VGA monitor, you can just grab a dongle, plug it into that USB-C port, and then go VGA to that monitor. And when it comes to actual displays, this will support up to two different displays with the entry level model. If you get the M2 Pro model, then it will support up to three displays, but this still supports a 6K monitor at 60 Hertz, a 5K monitor at 60 Hertz, and obviously a 4K monitor as well at 60 Hertz. But if you have a 1080p monitor, then by all means, that's still gonna work perfectly fine. And what I love is that it does supply it natively or support it natively as opposed to something like the M2 MacBook Air, which only supports one display out. And then one more thing to know when it comes to differences between the M2 Mac Mini and the M2 Pro Mac Mini is just that you get two additional Thunderbolt 4 ports on the rear versus with the Mac Mini that I received, it's only two Thunderbolt 4 ports. But again, keep in mind how much you're paying for this device. It is $500, so only having two ports, but still having an HDMI and two USB-A and an Ethernet is more than enough. Honestly, there are some hubs that cost $300 that give you this port and that's it, and it's just a hub. So the only real issue that I had with the M2 Mac Mini was that during setup, there was a kind of a, a little hiccup when connecting actual Bluetooth keyboards and a Bluetooth mouse, especially, especially ones that aren't from Apple, like the Magic Keyboard, the Magic Mouse, or the Magic Trackpad. I had to physically plug in my Bluetooth keyboard, which eventually did get picked up and it did work, but with my Logitech Anywhere S2, maybe it's because it's a little bit dated and it still uses micro USB to charge, but even when I plugged that in, it still would not recognize it. So I had to pull out my Magic Trackpad, which I do have, thank goodness, in order to actually be able to use a mouse or a trackpad to actually point and click and get my setup started. But after I got that set up, then I was able to Bluetooth connect my Logitech mouse and Bluetooth connect my Satechi X1 Slim keyboard, and then I was able to put away the Magic Trackpad and I was all set to go. So that was my only complaint when it came to setting up the Mac Mini. Otherwise, everything was very familiar, very easy to do, very self-explanatory. You just log into your iCloud and you're good to go. But now let's run a couple tests. 
Okay, so the first test that I like to run with these M2 machines is just opening up every single app for the first time and seeing how quickly it runs. Now remember, we're dealing with the baseline model. This one is $500. We have eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Let's start opening all these applications and see how quickly they open. And you can see that immediately, immediately they're all opening up. Every single one is opening up with zero issues. And now it's asking me to log in for the first time. A lot of splash screens probably, because again, this is the first time I'm opening these applications. But every single one of them opened up with no problem. So if I Apple Q out of all of them, and if I do this one more time, and everything is looking good. Obviously all these are bouncing up and down because it's gotta get me through all these splash screens like I mentioned earlier, making sure that I'm good to go and ready to go. So not now, I don't wanna enable any notifications. iMovie get, wants me to get going. But overall the M2 with native applications especially runs so, so smoothly. It's absolutely unreal. Let's play around with a little bit of video export to see exactly how we're doing. So here I'm actually editing something in iMovie. This is just a test edit, but to let you guys know what I'm working with, right? This is 4K 60 footage right here, and you can see that it's scrubbing it very, very easily, right? These first two, I already edited a little bit, added some color, slowed it down, made sure to stabilize the footage. But again, if I go on here, go into my settings, the things that take the longest time are stabilizing footage. And you can see within seconds, it stabilized a, what, seven to eight second clip, and I can modify however I see fit, and then I press the space bar and you can see that it's moving and it's stabilized. I can slow it down if I want to. So let's slow that down. I want to stop all noise from coming in completely. So you can see that very, very easily it's running through this 4k footage. Now, if you threw some 8k footage at it, maybe it would stutter a little bit, but honestly, I really don't think it would. As long as you have enough storage on device, you should be totally fine. But if I want to add, let's say some transitions, right? I can throw in a transition here with zero issue. Let's do a slide, right? And then let's do one of these. And then this is also a time lapse from earlier. So if I transition into this one, then you can see that it's just a little time lapse that I created earlier that's moving on. So again, now we're dealing with 4K 60 with some slow down footage that has been edited, has been stabilized as well in post. So now what I wanna do is actually try to export this. We are dealing with a 54 second clip and I'm gonna export this in 4K of course, in high quality, compress faster. And I have a timer right here that I'm gonna play while I press next. So we'll press next here. We'll save it to the desktop in three, two, one. So let's see how long it takes to export a 54 second file. Here the estimate does give me, let's see what it says here. This is about a minute overall, but let's let this thing run and see what happens. And it looks like within 35 seconds, we were able to export that 4K footage into this iMovie. We'll press play here, and you can see that it's running very, very smoothly. So no issues whatsoever with this M2 Mac Mini. Again, eight gigs of RAM. It's crazy how well this works with so little under the hood. It's the power of that M2, everybody. So now let's do a quick Wi-Fi test. So this does come equipped with Wi-Fi 6E, but I do not personally have a Wi-Fi 6E router. I have a Wi-Fi 6 router, and I do have a gigabit connection to my Wi-Fi. So let's quickly test it out and see how fast this Wi-Fi speed is. So we'll allow this, and let's see what it gives us overall with Wi-Fi speeds. Again, I do have up to a gig of internet connection. I'm in an apartment, so it's not too far away. 300 megabytes per second, which again is fine, 250 megabytes per second. That's probably more indicative of my router than it is the actual Mac mini. But you see my upload speeds are relatively high as well. If they would be happy to climb back up, maybe it's a little slow right now. There are other people streaming, but overall, normally my upload speeds are much higher. They're around 100 to 200, but let's see what it finalizes itself at. So I'm getting about 286 down and 109 up, which in my opinion is more than enough for the type of user that's gonna be using this Mac mini. And then if you're the type of person that likes to have multiple things open at once, you know, maybe have a Netflix open, for some reason maybe have a YouTube video playing, you can do that and you can do it very easily. Like you can see that I have one video, two video playing, three videos playing, and we're dealing with 4K and 1080p footage. So again, this is the baseline model for $500. I don't know if there's any other computer that can do what this can do. And now my last little test is actually playing a game called Code of War, which is very similar to, I guess you would call of duty mobile, you would say. A shooting game, first person shooter, as you can see, kind of going in, trying to get this target over here. And before I actually opened this, I was actually playing those same three, four YouTube videos, had all those windows open and everything seemed fine. So if I press escape, make it into small screen, which is still right here, all these videos are still playing. And if I press okay, I don't really know why it's such a small screen, it doesn't let me expand it but you can see that it's still playing, which is crazy to see. So 
You can lightly game on this thing if you want to. Keep in mind, I do use Apple Arcade for all of my gaming when it comes to iOS devices for the most part, because it's just kind of optimized for Apple Silicon, even though this was a Rosetta app. But just so you guys know, you are able to game to a certain extent. You know, it probably wouldn't enter esports competitions, but if you're somebody like me who just likes to casually game, doesn't really care too much about it, this could be the way to go. But that is gonna do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, this Mac Mini is very, very powerful. And for $499 from the Education Store, and it's already on sale at Best Buy and Amazon for $499, depending on what region you're in, it is a no-brainer if you're looking into getting a Mac Mini for a desktop solution. It opened up every single app extremely quick. I was able to run a bunch of YouTube videos at the same time, edit and render and export a video with no problem whatsoever with in 4K60, with slow-mo, with, with some LUTs on there and some different color grading, which I absolutely loved. So overall, there is zero complaint with this Mac Mini. Obviously, you will need to spend money on, let's say, a display, a keyboard, and a mouse, but if you have those laying around, whether they're new or old, they will work with this computer. So if you guys already have that laying around, $500, again, is a no-brainer for somebody that needs a desktop solution. But then now comes the question of who is this Mac Mini for, right? For $500, it can do a lot of stuff. It, it can do your emailing, your Slack, your video conferencing like Zoom and Skype and things like that. You can run all your Google Docs, all your shared sheets. It works great with Microsoft. And as you notice, you can actually edit 4K footage. So if you are maybe doing some small video editing projects, some photo editing projects, maybe to run an advertisement for your local business or something like that, this is gonna be more than enough. So in my opinion, this is for the student that's maybe in high school or middle school that wants to have an at-home desktop computer that can be shared amongst the family because you can create different profiles. Or this is also for the retail owner, right? The small business owner that wants to have a computer and not just kind of like a square setup like for a POS system, but they wanna have a Mac computer in the back end that they can handle all their emails, be able to track inventory, but also at the same time, maybe create a little something to help advertise for their business. That is who this computer is for, or it's for somebody that wants to run maybe a Plex server or use it to connect things like Google Home to HomeKit, somebody that uses maybe a Mac mini as an interstitial server in their house, that's what this can also be used for. But for the most part, whoever gets it, they're gonna be extremely happy with it. Just don't think it's gonna be doing 8K60 and be able to game on it intensely because again, you're still only dealing with eight gigs of RAM, so eventually it will stutter. But for what I tested it for, which is kind of the, the ins and outs, the day-to-day, -day, the minute tasks, the tedious tasks that you go through every day, this thing will handle that with no problem whatsoever and it can do a little bit more. So think about it in a box of, hey, it can do all the everyday stuff and a little bit more when I need it to. But that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. If you guys did enjoy, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below and leave a comment, did you guys pick up this Mac Mini? Is this something you're looking to get into? Is this Mac Mini something that's on your radar? What would you use it for? Or would you get maybe the M2 Pro Mac Mini? And definitely stay tuned because Jeff will be reviewing the M2 Pro version of the Mac Mini. I just wanted to go from a budget angle and we will be doing a budget setup with this thing because for less than $1,000, you can get a full desk setup with the computer itself with this Mac Mini, which I'll show you guys in a future video. But that's gonna do it. If you guys wanna watch some more iPadOS, iOS, or macOS videos, click on one of these right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando. I'm out of here. Peace.